So today we're going to talk about one of the most interesting characters in the uh, seminal gangster flick Scarface, Alejandro Sosa. In the movie, Sosa is portrayed as a member of the Bolivian political elite and a leading manufacturer of cocaine. And Al Pacino's Tony Montana character is uh, sent down to negotiate a deal on behalf of his boss, Frank Lopez, back in Miami. After some uh, twists and turns, Tony and Sosa forge their alliance and Tony Montana becomes the king of Miami thanks to Sosa's supply of cheap cocaine. Eventually they have a falling out when Tony Montana balks at killing the wife and children of a crusading journalist and Sosa sends a hit squad up to Florida where they finally kill the Cuban kingpin inside his mansion. So the question everyone wants to know, was Alejandro Sosa a real person? Was he based on a real person? And the answer is yes. Uh, it turns out that the real Sosa was even more interesting, more ruthless, more powerful than the fictional version. His name was Roberto Suarez, and he was probably the chief architect of the modern cocaine business. And one time he was supplying probably 80% of the world's cocaine base. Pablo Escobar and the rest of the Medellin cartel were his biggest customers. Suarez was a wealthy landowner, a descendant of Amazonian uh, rubber barons who'd been responsible for the extermination of an entire indigenous tribe in Bolivia back in the 1800s. Kerosene is poured over the leaves and the mix is then stomped into a pulp in a process similar to primitive wine pressing. 150 pounds of leaves worth $100 makes a pound of paste, which then sells for several thousand dollars. The leaf stoppers are recruited by labor bosses who pass out cocaine cigarettes to keep them going tirelessly for hours on end, wired on the drug. For that reason, the bosses call these workers cepes, or ants. So fast forward to the late 70s, Roberto Suarez is controlling the Bolivian cocaine fields, which is the center of cocaine production in the world. And he's making so much money, he actually finances the overthrow of the Bolivian government. And he installs a corrupt colonel named Gomez as the new president and his partner in the coca business. General Luis Garcia Mesa became president in 1980, was reportedly paid a million dollars by the drug mafia to leave them alone. He's now in exile in Argentina, where it is said he is still making money on drugs. Luis Arce Gomez used to be Minister of the Interior. When he was, they called that office the Ministry of Cocaine. He's wanted by the U.S. for drug trafficking. He is also in Argentina, reportedly still in business. So guess who Suarez has working for him as his chief security consultant, the architect of the coup d'etat. It's none other than Nazi war criminal and one time CIA asset, Klaus Barbie, the butcher of Lyon. Klaus Barbie commanded a, a motley crew of mercenaries that oversaw, that oversaw the coup d'etat and he was responsible for murdering hundreds of students and union members all across South America from the 50s up through the 70s as a right-wing mercenary, a, a gun for hire for, for right-wing governments south of the border. And this is Roberto Suarez, the biggest drug dealer in the world. He is the boss. Suarez supplies at least a third of all the cocaine entering the United States and seems untouchable at home. He's got a private army called the Fiancés of Death to scare police and rivals alike. The Suarez enforcers were trained by ex-Gestapo boss Klaus Barbie. He recruited the fiancés of death from among right-wing thugs in Europe. The Siles government let France extradite Barbie last year to stand trial for war crimes. So after Klaus Barbie and Roberto Suarez's coup on the Bolivian government, uh, most drug dealers were released from Bolivian prison, and anyone that had challenged them or supported the union movement was killed, tortured, or imprisoned. 140 rival drug dealers to the Suarez monopoly were, were killed in one fell swoop. And at this time, the U.S. is still willing to partner with anyone that will fight against unions, fight against left-wing movements, fight to oppress indigenous uh, movements. And the United States wants to support the interests of American corporations, aggressive capitalism, and destroy any groups that would be susceptible to uh, communist influence and communist threat. In Bolivia, uh, those allies included Roberto Suarez, world's biggest cocaine manufacturer. So he's being protected for certain 
by the U.S. government at this time. Now, in the movie Scarface, there's a key scene where Alejandro Sosa calls a meeting with the various corrupt politicians, military officials, and reps of the American government. Tony Montana's there. He tells them they have a problem with a crusading journalist who's exposing their conspiracy to the world, and Tony Montana's assignment is to kill the journalist before he can speak in front of the United Nations. In exchange, the American that's at the meeting, who's presumably a CIA operative, promises to help Tony with his own legal troubles back in Miami. Basically, give him a get out of jail free card in exchange for killing this guy. Cocaine, cocaine. On one hand, you're saying the United States government is spending millions of dollars to eliminate the flow of drugs onto our streets. At the same time, we are doing business with the very same government that is flooding our streets with cocaine. Mm -hmm. See? This man here, Alejandro Sosa, a very interesting character. He's a wealthy landowner, educated in England, very good family. But this man is the business brain and drug overlord of an empire that stretches across the Andes. He's not your ordinary drug dealer. So Oliver Stone, the screenwriter of Scarface, drew this scene, I think, from reality. He took a little poetic license to make a point about American maneuvering south of the border. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was referencing the case of Orlando Letelier, uh, who was a Chilean dissident gunned down right in Washington, D.C., with the obvious acquiescence of the U.S. government and probably at the hand of a sometime U.S. CIA operative. In real life, Letelier was raising public outcry about American involvement in the coup in Chile and the murder of democratically elected President Salvador Allende at the hands of once again American-backed uh, criminals, in this case uh, the general of Chile, Chile, Chile's army, Augusto Pinochet. At this point, early 1980s, Roberto Suarez, who Alejandro Sosa was based on, was making so much money that when his son uh, got arrested in Florida doing a cocaine transaction, Suarez offered to pay a lump sum of $3 billion to the U.S. banks to pay off the Bolivian national debt in exchange for his son getting out of jail. Um, well, so we'll never know if uh, Roberto Suarez had a rival like Tony Montana in the movie Scarface or if he ever sent hit squads up to Miami, but we do know that he was apparently under the protection uh, from the American government, and he stayed free all the way until 1988 when he was finally arrested. And uh, Roberto Suarez, a.k.a. Alejandro Sosa, the first real king of cocaine, served only seven years in prison, and he died in 2000, a free man.